What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Josh Coker here, and we are continuing our series on how to write a science fiction fantasy reader magnet in order to build your audience, in order to build your newsletter, so that you can capture those readers no matter what platform you got them from. And real quick, today what we're going to talk about primarily is should I write my reader magnet first or should I write my main story first? And it's a nuanced answer. I think it really depends on where you are in your writing journey and where you are in your reader magnet process. So let me just say this. There's, there's two main camps. On camp one, you have people who have been writing their book, their main book, whether they've outlined it, started the story, or halfway through the story, have written and published a couple of the stories. That's, that's group one. Then you have group two, who is someone who has not written the story yet, started the story yet, or maybe you've written stories before, but you haven't written stories in this new fictional world that you're about to launch in. So those are the two groups we're dealing with. And then you have to ask yourself, which one of those am I? And based on that is really going to change the answer for you. If you're in group one where you started writing your main story, my personal opinion is that you finish that story first you finish whichever book you're on in that story if you're on book one finish it if you're on book two finish it then you can go oh then you can go and re-attack the reader magnet now if you fall into category two where you haven't started writing your book yet or you haven't uh or, or you've written books before but you haven't started this series yet then I would, I would start with the reader magnets first. And going forward, any books that you write, I would start with the reader magnet first. And For example, go in the future, when I launch, I plan on doing an epic fantasy sometime in the future, I will write all the reader magnets related to that first before I start writing the main series. Just because, and here's why. Once, first of all, the reader magnets are shorter to write. And here I'll, I'll bring up just to remind everybody. Here's here's a reader magnet that I wrote for my for my uh, science fiction space opera adventure. And this book is about twenty thousand words. Most reader magnets for 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 like a prequel kind of deal, like you would be doing for this strategy, are going to be between ten and 20,000 words. And whether you do three reader magnets, two reader magnets, or one reader magnet, that's all going to be dependent on your personal situation. But they'll all fall within that range. And so it's going to be faster to write those, whether it's one reader magnet or three, than it will be to write a full-fledged novel. And so because you can write them faster means you can publish them faster. If you can publish them faster, then that means you can build your audience in the background while you're writing the main stories. So for example, I can leverage this reader magnet <coughs> to get Amazon readers, to get reviews, to boost the algorithm for my, my author name, while at the same time, I'm writing the other books. And during that time, let's say it takes three months, six months, a year to write the book or books in your main series, then you can start developing a relationship with the people that have started to read your reader magnets, whether it's through book promos or Amazon or some other platform. So that is, to me, the benefit. And then the question might, you might have is, okay, well, how do I know if I should write one book or two books 
or even three books for reader magnets. And to me, that's really up to, that's a very nuanced answer. And it's, it's based on everybody's situation independently. So if you're someone who has, because let, let's break it down. These things take up time, energy, and sometimes uh, money plays a factor. As in, are you, are, are you going to be able to sustain this for a long period of time without getting money from your books? Because the, the sad truth is the more reader magnets you do, the less money you get up front. That's the key, up front on your investment. Now, to me, each of these are an investment. And to me, writing the more free books you write, the more you're going to get back in returns later on down the road. But if time is an issue or money is an issue, you may only have time to write one reader magnet or two reader magnets. And if that's the case, then stick with one reader magnet and stick with a simple strategy. And then have that reader magnet lead straight into your your main series. Uh, if on the other hand, you have time re and resources and the energy to write two or three reader magnets, then you can do some more advanced things that way. It's not necessary, but it's just recommended. And again, this is, so now you should have an idea. Should I, it, like based on where you are, okay, I, I am halfway through with my main series. All right, well then I need to finish that book first before I think about what prequel book I need to write for my reader magnet. But if you're at the very beginning and you're just starting out, I would think about what reader magnets can I create to to write, uh, to, to start building a fan base for, for that series or that universe. And then the one final thing I'll say is that there are some people who aren't writing in series, so to speak. Um, this usually isn't science fiction and fantasy. It's usually romance writers. However, there are science fiction fantasy writers who will write one-off books, meaning that it's about one character, one situation, and when, it, when it's done, there is no sequel, there is no prequel, that's it. And... In my mind, there are two ways you can go about this that were stolen, quote unquote, from romance writers. The first one is that you write an anthology of stories. And it doesn't, it, let me take that back. Several short stories um, that, that can be pieced together over time. The problem with that is now you got to write, you know, maybe three or four short stories in an anthology to fill up that 10 to 20,000 word lim uh, sweet spot that you're looking for for a reader magnet. But the benefit is now you are you don't have to write as, as long of stories and over time you can compile all of them into a large collection of, of an anthology of stories about your, about your universe, okay? With, with romance writers, what they'll do is they'll have their universe might be within a, a hospital or a town, and that's their universe. And so all the people in that hospital or town are members who might make guest appearances in book one, but are the main characters in book two. And so you could do the same thing with science fiction and fantasy, and you could have your bounty hunter in book one be the main character in book two. And that's another way you can do it. And whether you take that the anthology route or you make them like a full-fledged novella, like a 10,000 word book to a 20,000 word book, that's up to you. But that's another way you can get around it if you plan on making your main books just one-offs. That way the readers are kind of used to that style. Um, I have also heard a very compelling argument from Joe Lello that this also allows different entry points from the story. So let's say your reader likes bounty hunters. Well, that's going to be their favorite entry point into your story world. Whereas another reader might like, 
uh, crime or investigation. So maybe they're following a investigator policeman in your story world, like a, you know, a futuristic investigator, or if it's, <coughs> excuse me, if it's a fantasy, then it's like, you know, maybe a wizard that's, that's looking into something. But the idea is that different entry points might get different readers that would be interested in your world, but like maybe they're not into the bounty hunter thing, but they're totally into the wizard thing or they're totally into the investigator thing. Those different entry points will help you um, get them in. So from that, the sky is the limit. You really have tons of options with this. The question you have to ask yourself is, do I have the time, money, and energy to make this happen? And then you have to choose, based on your personal situation, what is best for you. But now, hopefully that clears things up so that you're... The, the biggest thing is to take action. Do not go to book funnel. Do not try to implement any of these other steps that we're going to talk about in this series if you have not yet finished your main book or your reader magnet. And I already, I just told you in this episode how to prioritize which one over the other, depending on your own personal circumstances. So with that being said, I'll see you all in the next video. Take it easy.